Hi, I'm Dan Hi. Schmidt from the Motorcycle Racing TV show Team Jamal Challenge. My email is teamdan45 at gmail.com. My website is teamchicago.tv. We are in Willow Springs, Illinois. Willow Springs was also the home of Santa Fe Speedway. This is the Bill Will Memorial Motorsport Show. We have cars, we have trucks, a couple motorcycles, and uh, we're going to try to do this every year. So uh, this is part one. I'm going to do two shows from here. Gonna talk to a lot of these guys, put their cars on display, very interesting cars. Remember my email is tindan45 at gmail.com. As we see this 1936 Auburn Hotel Speedster replica parking in the circle right here downtown Willow Springs, Illinois. We're gonna kick off today's show with the national anthem. We're going to hear from Jessica Brown singing America's number one song. Yeah, you're good. Stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight. O'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in. I'm going to do this real quick because we're going to go right to ropes. Come and see me about the National Monument. All veterans in house, I'm going to give you a dog tag. It's a dog tag of a soldier fallen in the Middle East. It's a National Monument in Marseilles that runs coming up in a couple of weeks. It's 8,100 names now for the whole entire country. I'll tell you more about it. The picture's over there. So gentlemen, Tony Catrano and Jerry Cochero said we're going to build a National Monument. I said everybody, they were laughing. They said how? I said, you laughed at the wrong guys. If you remember in the Twice for Tots days when there was 100 posters all over the state, those guys got it done. Our first reading was 3,000 names for a whole entire country and we maintain it. We've been doing it for 20 years now. So in June, um, 18th, 18th, 18th. We're adding those that lost their license last year. It'll be the 13th from Kabul and plus three others. So we maintain it. I got literature over there and uh, it's amazing what private people could do when the government says it can't go on our agenda. They actually went to city, state, and federal government and said, hey, we want to put it in Grand Park, we want to put it downstate. Everybody said special agendas, and the attitude we are to is everybody will be dead by then, like Vietnam. Had it done in six months, five panels, 3,000 names, now 17 panels, over 8,000 names. So make some noise for the freedom, Ron. Okay? Robert, are you ready yet? One more minute. One more minute. All right, so we're going to have a lot of fun today. We've got 50-50. We're not going to do silent auctions. At this point in time, we're just going to sell his stuff. Everything that we have back there has his DNA, has his chromosome on it. It really does. That's why I'm wearing this tie. This is one of his favorite ties, and I feel goes in my heart. And we're all here. I'm amazed at the staff, the volunteers that showed up yesterday. 
They only had a couple meetings because Rose lives in Florida. So how do you put together an agenda when you're not here? They don't do it by Zoom. So she had, the, the people that were here yesterday, this is going to become spectacular. Willow Springs, make some noise for them. Look at the place that they gave us to have this beautiful event. I mean, they provided all the tables, all the, all the chairs. You can't beat this. And it was all basically donated by the city of Willow Springs. So may, may, let's make more noise for the mayor. She came to our thing. Make, I, don't, I forgot her name, but God bless them for stepping up. Well, the previous mayor was a good friend, actually, of, of Bill Will. So I'm sure he told her, you want to stay in office, you better do the right thing. No. <laughs> anyway, so they love Bill. They love Bill and Franklin Park. Claremont loves Bill because we were looking for a home. We now have a home. And uh, I saw that collection some years ago at uh, McCormick Place. And I said, where is this place? And I talked to, it was either Larry or Robert Claremont. And I think they, one of them passed away. Larry passed away. Larry passed away. And I'm glad you guys stepped up because we were talking to you guys from Motorbot back in the day. So, you know, a little bit, I'm going to throw out some real quick trivia until they're ready. So actually, Bill Will was inducted in two Hall of Fames, the World of Wheels Hall of Fame and actually the Motorbot Hall of Fame back in 2018. But we did that to trick him to show up. It was a benefit. But we knew if we were raising money for him, he wouldn't have showed up. So we started the first Hall of Fame induction. He was the first one at Motoblock. T.C. Christensen was the second one that built the Hog Slayer. The third one was Expert Psycho. And the fourth one was supposed to be Dan Schmidt, but the pandemic happened, so they kind of stiffed him. We got to go get you in there, dude. So anyway. Dan who? <laughs> Coffee Dan. Everybody knows Coffee Dan. Um, but, you know, everybody that... I can't believe coming to that meeting yesterday. You know, I'm so used to VFW posts and I'm not picking on the veterans, but you know, this is a class act. They let us use our city office. I felt we were having a mayoral meeting and everybody was so positive, it was great. So it's, we had a good crew and if they all stick together, we're all volunteers, nobody's getting paid. Any of the money that's raised here is hopefully gonna fund future Bill Woods, future gearheads. And that's kind of his movement. If somebody needs a scholarship or some funds to go to a technical school, which there aren't any anymore, Bill Will went to Lane Tech High School, and that's where he learned his, his machinery, his foundry, his craftsmen. Thank you, Coach, for a good opening. Now I spot this Rambler American, which is a station wagon, race car. Now let's talk to the owner. He was a former racer with the Chicago Wise Guys, but he had a very interesting story to tell me. So let's listen to Mike Duffy. So My name is Michael started. Duffy. Does anybody have a role in um, the The car is a 1964 Rambler fingers. wagon. Anybody's got a roll masking tape? It's got a 350 uh, Chevy roll, motor in it, you know, 350 transmission. Food, whatever you got. The rear end is out of a uh, Nova. A here. It's Keith got a 355 Posi in it. Oh, cool. All right. The front axle um, is off a 49 half ton pickup truck. At around 11 a.m. that's and scheduled. I that's about it. I bought children. the car. It was black, all Are flat black with no like chrome. Pledge of allegiance for us and then I painted it the that? way it is now, me and a friend of mine. Crazy Joe? Mike. So, so tell me about the Forget proposal. Right. Oh, uh, um, actually, right. it was the first time what I need, then, I, that the wise guys here. were booked Any to race at 66. At 11 o'clock, I'm going to call you. And I had set it up with the track. I worked on this for and eight I'll, months. We'll lead the crowd and the Pledge of Allegiance. Me and to Tommy right Straz were, were the first two guys today. out of the out of the, the um, get-go to get into the burnout box. Oh, George, okay. And I knew so my wife was going to go up into the stands and get George a better look. George is going to be another assistant back here. You, the, you know, the race yeah, was going on. Okay, I, I wanted to get her down here. close, so all I did does was anybody, I rolled into the water box as I reached up and I shut the motor off. Seeing the, Star the announcer said Duffy's having a you problem with the car. And she came back down by the burnout box. A friend of mine picked her up over the wall, and the rest is history. We'll put you on the voice. How many years have you been married? Okay, Jessica's going to do we the We were married. Banner. All right, we got that dialed in? Not, uh, oh, cool. September right. 15th. So, uh, uh, 2001. Jessica, and then the and veterans. still going strong. Be here about 11. Congratulations and thank you, Mike. And now we spot this car with James Gardner in the front seat. Well, the owner of this car is a mutual friend of Don French, another friend of mine that passed away 
very helpful guy. He's going to tell us about his car, the Rockford Files, and Don French. My name is Jim Sula, and um, I met Bill Wilt to a friend of mine, our mutual friend, Don French, who I used to work with at a motorhome company. And um, the year Don died, we had hauled the car around in a couple places. And uh, the year after, uh, Bill came to the Riverside Car Show filming. And uh, he did an interview with me and my uh, 1977 Firebird. And we talked about, it was more of a tribute to Don French uh, than more about the car. And uh, he gave me Chris's award that year. Uh, it's the only big award I've ever won. And I know it's mostly because of Don French. And, uh, and whenever I talked to Bill, he was always very nice and kind. And uh, so hopefully next year I'll get involved more with this show. Um, and, as a tribute to Bill and to my friend Don. And anyway, this is a 1977 Pontiac Firebird Esprit. Um, it's a look-alike car for uh, the Rockford File Firebird that James Garner drove back in the 1970s. And um, Don French hauled the car up to uh, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, where they filmed it with the last on-camera interview with James Garner and Stephen J. Cannell. They talked about how Garner picked the Firebird Esprit for the show as well as doing most of the stunt work on the show, uh, especially with the car driving. And uh, so they filmed me driving the car around uh, and it split that into, uh, split it in screen with them talking. And uh, this car's got a 305 Chevy engine, two barrel. Uh, it's got, uh, you know, it's got a nice pick up and go. It's good hit, and, and when you drive it, it feels like a 1970s car. It's not really restored, it's pretty much 85% original car. And, uh, and uh, so it's a favorite of mine. It's the first car my son ever drove, uh, first car my son ever drove. And uh, I got a lot of great memories for Don French and Bill Wilt about it, so anyway. Thank you, Jim. And now we're looking at the war bike. This is the creation that Bill Wilt made from the ground up, 6,000 horsepower. He wanted to build a motorcycle that would turn five seconds in the quarter mile. But Bill Wilt was a racer from this early day. As we see my Triumph race bike, besides being a machinist and a mechanic, he was a good motorcycle racer, and he even started at 14. So let's listen to Bill's adventures at early ages racing. And, and I got a DKW from Germany, which is a uh, very high quality machine, very well made. And then I really started appreciating motorcycles. And that was my first trip into racing. I went out to Oswego. I rode it out to Oswego. But they didn't know what to do with me. I was only 14 years old. And they, they talked to each so other. So you went to, you went all the way to Oswego, to Oswego which is it, from where you were living. It was at least 70 miles. Yeah, it was a long haul. Right, I'm right. Like Oswego, because, Illinois, yeah. from north side of Chicago. But they, they wouldn't let me race because they said, well, we at least have to have a parent with us. Right, <laughs> so right, They didn't right. know what to do with me. My brother-in-law was running a stock car at O'Hare Stadium. I wanted to run a stock car. Oh, you had car. a brother-in-law that yeah. did race. Yeah. And, okay. And uh, so I started building the stock car, and, and uh, it was it was funny. I was worried about so many things. I had a 53 Ford chassis and a 56 Buick engine. Oh, but when the was the Ford by 53 still a flathead, or they had over? The 53 Ford would have been a flathead, but I was just using the chassis with the overhead valve Buick engine in it. Right, 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 so, right. But it was completely illegal. Um, and I so you had to run the engine. That was one of the rules at O'Hare. It had to be a complete car. If you had a Buick engine, have a Buick car. Oh, right, it right. had to be the car, you know. So who did the engine swap? You did that. I did that. Yeah, sure. Why? Because you could. You I, just. I wanted to. I mean, <laughs> right, right. I, I, I and how old were you then? Well, when the car was finished, when I finally dragged it out to O'Hare, I was 17. 17. So, but it took a couple of years. It, I didn't build it in six months or anything. It took a couple of years to build it. And so I, you, where did you keep this? Did you have a garage? No, I was running three garages at the time on paper route money. Picture that. On paper on route. paper route money. Picture so that. how many paper routes were you running? Well, I had a couple of paper routes. I worked hard. Did for you do it, a you know, morning paper route and an and afternoon? And an afternoon paper route. Yeah. And did they let you race? They let me race, and I was really concerned because I was only 17, and I knew you had to be 18, and I was very concerned about it. And the car is totally illegal, and I know it. 
and I'm afraid because it's so, I've tried it on the streets, and the thing would fishtail like crazy. This, you no, know, it's very light chassis. I think it weighed it was like 27, 2800 pounds with a Buick engine in it, and a locked rear end, which I had done myself. I stick welder, welded the spider gears together and all that, and you jump on the throttle, and this thing was just fishtailed on, because the whole car was gutted and all that, you right, know? Right. But anyway, we were out there, and they had like a little short track set up, and these guys were out there saying, boy, you guys are pretty good. You should go to Sycamore. Didn't even know. Yeah, had never heard of it. What's Sycamore? Right, right. And so they told us about this track in Sycamore. So we went out there the next Friday night, and boy, our eyes got that big. This was so cool, you know. And that started my motorcycle racing. So that would have been '69. That would have been '69. Yeah. Right, right. And what did you have then for a bike? Uh, I went out there first. I believe my the first time out there was a Honda '90. The second time out there, I bought a. Yamaha DT1 with a gift kit on it. I don't know if you know what that is. Right, right, a, right, right. You know, it was a fast motorcycle. Right, that was, right. It was evil handling. It was terrible. And right. I realized right away this thing's got way more power than it's got chassis. Right. And I was looking around, and by this time I heard about Santa Fe Seaway. I went to Santa Fe, and I saw what the winners were riding, and they were riding Boltacos at the time, so I wanted to get a Boltaco. So then I got a Boltaco that was the third bike. So you bought a Persang. Persang, yes. Bill was a serious motorcycle racer. Here he is picking up the trophy at Sycamore Speedway and picking up the win at Santa Fe Speedway. At Santa Fe Speedway, he won a good number of the B Finals, which was quite a task. I never won a B Final at Santa Fe, but Bill was a much better short tracker. And this is the only photo that I have of Bill and I racing. That is Bill, number 43, either on his Harley or his Triumph, and I'm right behind him on my Triumph, Clark's Motor Speedway, 1974. Now let's talk to the former mayor of Willow Springs, Al Novacek. My name's Alan Novacek. I used to be mayor of Willow Springs here from 2005 to 2017. All right. And of course, I lived in town. My car I have here today is a 1949 Cadillac Club Coupe. Uh, that's the car with the body style that looks like a fastback. So today we're here um, to show respect and appreciate all Bill Wilt did for the motorsport community. I was in office uh, about two years when I wanted to put on a car show and I came up with a Thursday night car show one time a year. It was very successful in the beginning. After the second year, I learned that Janine Lauschat, who is a volunteer for Bill Wilt, lived also in Willow Springs. As fortune would have it, we came together. Uh, I asked her for her help getting Bill Wilt out to the show. He was out the third year, the third annual we had, the Willow Springs car show. And after that year, we went from 250 cars approximately, we almost doubled the following year. Bill Wilt worked hard to promote it. He liked the charities. It was a benefit car show, uh, military charities, uh, Vietnam Veterans of America, and a couple others. And it really did well. And for years, uh, we averaged between 425 and 500 cars. You couldn't fit anybody else here no more cars, and a lot of that had to do with Bill Wilt. And and he would interview everybody. The, the thing that made Bill Wilt special was he made everybody feel uh, that they were important, that they contributed to the motorsport hobby, whether it was racing, show cars, motorcycles. Uh, you know, we all know how much Bill did, uh, even with boats and snowmobiles, and, and, and the list goes on and on and on. And, and I've met a lot of people here that right. know Bill Wilt a lot longer than I had, and I find out more about Bill Wilt and all that he contributed. He really sacrificed. He sacrificed a lot for this hobby. Uh, there's a lot of things we enjoy today that I am convinced uh, might not be here if Bill Wilt hadn't been the consummate promoter, gentleman, hard worker, uh, uh, and, and ombudsman, let's say, for the whole for the whole motorsport community. Um, a lot of people miss him, I know I miss him, and uh, this is a great way to show uh, in the future uh, to other people all that he did, and I think more will be coming to light as, as more interviews 
you know, uh, happen and more people get to speak, um, I think this will eventually really uh, turn into something. I know that they want to have some type of a, a, a museum and something to continue his legacy, and, uh, uh, and I'm here to support that in any which way and volunteer in any which way. I'm still good uh, friends with Janine. We stay in touch all the time. And, um, and uh, what else can you say? It, uh, it's, it's really terrific a day like today, and the weather's perfect. You couldn't ask for anything better. I thank you, Dan. I've known Dan Schmidt here, got to know him through other Bill Wilt uh, events and, and things that he was part of. Um, it, it, you know, I could go on and on, but um, I, I think everybody gets, gets the idea here. So, Dan, thank you for doing this interview. And, uh, and for everybody else that volunteered, I uh, hope they have their time to tell their stories. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Now I spot this photo of a Chevy Nova at US 30 drag strip. It said it went 117 miles per hour, turning 1177. And I had a chance to talk to the owner of this great looking car. Let's talk to Wally Stasco. Hi, my name is Wally Stasco. I'm from the southwest side of Chicago. I'm glad to be here at the Wilt Memorial. Uh, I, I have my 66 Nova here. Uh, I bought that car when I was 17 years old uh, and raced it back in the early 70s at US 30 in Oswego. Uh, then I put it to rest. So life got in the way, got married, had kids, all that good stuff. And now she's back out again. So uh, I'd love to have that car out on the street. Okay, so what did you pay for that car brand new? I paid $900 for that car in 1969. So it was two years old? No. Uh, four, three years old. Three years old. Three years old. $900. Yes. And what, I, what engine came with it? No engine. Oh, no <laughs> that engine. That was my own. That's okay. why I got it for 900 So then I, I bought my first motor, it was a 350 I put in there. And, and then I was 17 years old, young kid. I know, uh, it's a word of mouth, you know, just building everything in the garages and going racing. And uh, I stopped racing in 1973, but uh, I did run low 11s. The best time was 11.32, with 122 miles per hour. And that was with a 586 gear. And that's shifting with a four speed. Thank you, Wally, and thank you for all your help today. Now we spot a 1923 Model T bucket. This is a complete custom car, a great looking car, and I had a chance to talk to the owner, Bob Classic. I'm here at the Bill Wilt Memorial in Willow Springs. I brought my car here today. My name is Robert Classic and I have a 1923 tea bucket. I was at a Father's Day show in LaGrange about 10 years ago, and I met Bill Wilt. We had a fantastic time. He loved the tea bucket because it brought him from motorcycle to an open cockpit car. He loved that. He thought it was fantastic. Um, I enjoy it, my wife enjoys it, my wife even enjoys it so much that she drives it. So we have a very good time with it. Uh, I had a very nice time with Bill Wilt and uh, I really miss him. So did you build the car? Or? Yes. How long have you had it? Well, I, I've had, I have the car now about 16 years. I bought it, I took it all apart, and I rebuilt it all so that I don't have no complications. I never had a complication with it. Never had a problem with it. It's uh, pretty basic, and it's just a fun car to go out for ice cream with or car shows with, or um, sometimes we'll go, you know, We'll go to uh, an event where uh, we meet friends, and it's really nice. We have a great time. We go to the local car shows, and uh, everybody enjoys it, especially the kids. The kids love it. They think it's great. Thank you, Bob, and thank you for your help today. And now we spot this great-looking Chevy Coupe. Now let's talk to the owner of this beautiful car. Here at the Bill Wilts uh, Memorial Car Show, 
Um, if you might remember, Bill Wilt came to our town in Oakbrook Terrace. I was the alderman at the time. And back in the 90s, we did tons and tons of shows with Bill Wilt. Uh, we love the guy, Chris. I mean, what a, what a perfect couple. You know, we see Kim here today, Allison. I mean, it was the best. And uh, and God bless him. And, and I can't believe he's not here. I mean, people were asking me a question about my grill and stuff like that. I said, well, there is a little difference. But I said, you know what? I'm not Bill Wilt. I don't have all the answers. He was the guy that had all the answers. Bill was our guy. So if anybody was in motorsports, if any kind, call Bill. Welding, rear ends. I don't know how he knew all that stuff. So. <laughs> All right, so tell me about this wonderful car you got here. I have a 1934 uh, outlaw body uh, frame. It's all boxed. It's got a 468. It's a 34 Chevy Coupe. It's got a 3 and 5 eighths cut on the top. It, um, it's got Borel exhaust, 3 inch all the way back. Uh, did I say it was a 468 in there with dual quads? And uh, one thing I did change on there was the headlights on there. The headlights used to, on a coupe, they're smaller. I put the sedan sure. headlights on there because they're, they're bigger, and I think it gave more of a presence. So, How often do you get to drive this car? Well, I have a couple other cars, so it's like, what do I get to go, my motorcycle, or do we get my car? And I, and I still work at my age, because I want to, you know, and it's a, so I'm having a great time here, and it's like, uh, not as often as I should. Thank you, John. You've got a great car and a wonderful story. For more information on the Bill Wilt Motorsports Foundation and Fun on Facebook, go to groups, and go to MSU TV, Motorsports Unlimited TV. For more information about the Bill Wilt Foundation and Fun and the scholarship program we are putting together. To contact me, it's teamdan45 at gmail.com. I love to hear from my audience. Remember, you can always search on YouTube with Dan Schmidt Motorcycle Racing for great motorcycle racing action. Dan Schmidt Politics to learn what makes America great. And I highly encourage you to visit the World of Motorcycle Museum in Winnemac, Indiana, just off Indiana 39. It's four miles south of North Judson, Indiana. Give them a call first at 574-896. 3172. It's a great trip and a great collection of motorcycles.